Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. This week I'm at the Boreham Art Circle in Chomsford, Essex. This is part one of a two-part video where I demonstrate how to paint a simple bluebell wood. Well, I'm just on my way into Boreham on the outskirts of Chomsford. I'm going to do a demonstration stroke tutorial this afternoon um, for a lovely little group there. So um, I'm actually in Boreham now. So I've uh, the hall is up here on the right. So um, let's have a look and uh, can't wait to meet the uh, the artists. Okay, well here I am at Boreham Art Group today and um, I'm giving a demonstration, also a tutorial um, and we're looking, although the group don't know yet, we're looking at painting a bluebell wood. So everyone's going to go, ooh, 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 that's good, yeah. So um, anyway, um, we'd better crack on then. Okay then, um, let's get started. Um, I'm going to use three brushes, large mop, the medium mop, and the rigger. Um, my normal three brushes really for doing this sort of work. The first thing, you can work with me if you wish, but you can watch the processes as, you know, the first washes, and then you can do it, and then the, so I'll split it into probably about four stages. Background, the, um, <coughs> middle distance and foreground uh, and once it all dries we'll then start putting in a little bit of leaf work a little few branches um, so if you just watch this and uh, you probably have a bit of a better idea then of uh, where we're going with that good right now I'm going to thoroughly soak now the key to this is to thoroughly soak your brushes because a large brush tends to have um, if you're not careful uh, you have a lot of air in the brush. So consequently, um, once the brush uh, is really dry, you dip it in the water, and you've got water around the outside, but not in the middle. So always dive into it and, and get all the air out. Right? Now, I'm gonna dab across the paper as far down as that distant line there. Now, I may need just some tissue somewhere, because at this angle, it's a bit more difficult to, um, to control. Um, but um, that's always handy to have that excuse when it all goes pear-shaped. Um, but basically, um, right. And I'm going to sweep that brush across. I'm going to reload it. Notice the amount of water that I'm applying to the paper. And it will dry from the top down so, you know, work your way from the top down, and then you may need to go back again. Make certain that you cover all of the paper with water at that area, okay? Because if you leave dry patches, then the paint will just flow to that edge and create a hard edge. You won't get that soft feel, all right? And when you come down, finishing, fin paint, we're going to paint over the trees, don't go around those, down into the distance area, and up again, and through, like that. Don't worry about perfect lines there, anything will do on that outside edge, but finish it there, at that distance area. Now, I'm going to damp it even one more time, and I would suggest that once you've damped your paper, you allow that water to soak in because it will dry very, very quickly. Um, so, um, damp it, damp it again. Do you want us to be doing this now? No, you can either do it now, I will give you time to do it once you've seen the outcome. It's entirely up to you. Now, if, you've got, if your paints haven't been used for a while, wet them up, get them down, okay, to loosen them up. <laughs> right, now, the background. I'm going to go in, I'm not even going to show any sky, because we can't see any sky, okay? So I'm going to start off with raw sienna as a base colour, 
right at the top there. Okay. And notice how soft it is, how, how, how nice and it's, you know, how, how the paint is running, um, nice and soft edged. Okay, now I'm going to add a little cadmium yellow to that. You could use lemon yellow, Windsor yellow, any of those yellows really. There you go. And that is, I'm more or less putting a very uneven wash of colour onto it, I suppose you could, you could say. Come right to the edges. There you go. Now, in the lower area, where the real depth of the wood is, I'm going to add a little cobalt blue to the raw sienna. Right. Cadmium yellow or lemon yellow. Yeah. Now I'm adding cobalt blue now while it's still damp, and I'm putting that in because that will be my far distant area, the real depth of the wood. And although you may think when you first put that blue grey in, see how blue that is? Now that is the far distance area, okay? Then as we move to the outer edges, I'm going to add a bit more yellow, a bit more blue, and I'm going to paint in the impression, really, of the star. Sorry, so which blue is that again, this bottom? Cobalt blue. That's all we're using for the background. Cobalt blue. Okay. This yeah. burnt sienna, all right, it's a bit dark. That seems to have raw. Raw sienna, use just cadmium yellow. Do you have, do you have um, cobalt blue? Um, sorry, do you have... Um, um, that would be the one. Yellow oak. Yellow oak. That would be the one. Okay. Now, this is where I'm going in with a stronger blue now, or blue-green, to create some real darker edges, leaving a few gaps. There we go. Cobalt blue. Yeah, yeah. You're making it stronger. Yes, just keep building up the strength of the colour. Can you see where my colour is gradually building and it's given that impression of tree, of branches. See, see the way the branches are beginning to flow um, over into this warm area. See how that's growing up? That's the depth of the wood, the dark, sort of distant, bluey um, area. Now I'm going in with an even stronger colour now, particularly here, while it's still damp. And these are overhanging blurred branches in the distance. There you are, look at that. Now doesn't that begin to look like a distant wood? And if you can catch it while it's still damp, then you're on to a winner. And that one's blue on top, is it again? A little bit more blue, a little bit more yellow. There we go. Look at that. You can't do better than that. Just see that's run down there. Don't really want it to get in there, so I'm just lifting that away. There we go, look at that, no problem. And I'm just going to go a little darker with this green. Um, yeah, let's, let's just pick up a little bit darker there. Because these can be uh, sort of hedging within that area. A little bit darker there. What's that colour you're using? Cobalt blue and raw sienna. Could use um, um, yellow ochre if you wish.
There we go. And that really, as far as I'm concerned, is the basic start to that blurred, distant background colour. We just then allow that to completely dry. Okay, well, that is now completely dry. We've used cobalt blue, raw sienna, and cadmium yellow, or equivalent sort of colours. The raw sienna is a dull yellow, yep, so is yellow ochre, any dull yellow. <coughs> the cobalt blue is not that strong a blue, and the um, cadmium yellow with the cobalt blue, that doesn't create a particularly strong green. So consequently, these are all background colours. If we were to use really stronger colours, uh, like uh, cadmium lemon or lemon yellow, um, with, um, with uh, Prussian blue, they would give you real vibrant colours. Now they we reserve for the foreground area. Distance, you want more or less um, uh, dominant colours really. And that blue there just creates depth into the wood. Right, so that's the explanation of that. The next thing we're going to do, now this is another area that um, gets really interesting. And that's my, um, that's my description of very difficult. Um, but um, we need a blue for the bluebells, right? Now that yellow, the, that, that green that you've got in your palette, first thing I'd recommend is to mix it stronger. So use cadmium yellow, and this time I'm going to use the ultramarine blue, okay? Cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue in a nice strong yellowy green mix, right? Okay, because if you've got that already in your palette, then you can dive straight in and spread that on all we need. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to put in the blue colour. Right? You can use two different brushes for this if you've got two larger brushes. So you've got one for the green and one for the blue. That's uh, a good option really, I suppose. What was your, what was your blue you used? I'm using ultramarine for this one, just because it's a little stronger and darker than the cobalt blue. That's the reason for that. Can I use Prussian blue? You could do. Uh, is it too dark? If you haven't got ultramarine. Oh well, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Use the raw sienna with that. That would help too. So I've got burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. Uh, what color is that? Cadmium. This one. That don't use the yellow ochre. So that's the one. So I want to use that one, one yeah. cadmium yellow. Yeah, yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Because you've got a stronger blue, yeah. you use a less of a strength of yellow. If you use if you use cadmium yellow with the Prussian blue, you will do later. But at this stage, it's still a little powerful. Right? It's all very complicated, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. um, and but of course, you'll all be viewing my YouTube channel. So you'll be able to watch this to your heart's content with all the explanations. Anyway, here we go. Um, now, to get a blue bell colour, right? My favourite mix is co cobalt blue. Could use ultramarine, but I do prefer cobalt. But if you've not got it, that's fine. And olysian crimson. Cobalt blue and alizarin crimson. That is my favourite mix for bluebells. Amongst other things, I would say, but for bluebells, that's in my opinion. Now, every artist will probably tell you a slightly different mix. And of course, you don't need too much of the red in there. It's got to be a purpley blue, more blue than red. Okay, so cobalt blue, a little olizarin, a reasonable strength, but initially not too strong because we're in the background. 
I'm still using the large brush. Okay, right. Now, this is the way. Now, I'm going to do this fairly quick because I want a bit of blend of colour. Right. I'm going to have bluebells running across there and sweeping down. Bluebells running, paint over the trees still. We sway the bluebells there. A little bit more water, a little bit more blue. A blue patch of blue there. Notice how I'm dodging in. Oh, at the, at the base of the tree too. Right? And then one last sway of uh, a little bit more red in it perhaps as you come forward. Just to give it a bit more strength. See that? In that foreground area. And that is the bluebell patches. There we go. Look at that, it's lovely. Clean the brush. Take a bit of moisture off of the brush. Dive into that green and stroke that in so it amalgamates with that. Because in between the bluebells will be green colours. You can put it into the bluebells as well if you like. I wouldn't be opposed to that at all. It's all gone silent. It's all concentration. It's amazing, isn't it? Can you see the beginnings of a bluebell? Look at that. And if you can hit that fairly quickly, so they blend. I've actually got a little bit of run back there. One or two cauliflowers. Well, that's good because they look like bluebells standing up. Or is it my eyes? <laughs> it could be. Like, it could be. I'm, uh, uh, I'm talking about bluebells so much this week. Um, I can see bluebells anywhere. <laughs> You know, one at Mersey on Friday, um, a demonstration. I've got a friend that might be a bluebell wood and all. You never know your luck. Okay, so there you go. That is the bluebells laid in. Finally, it's the, the for the first initial washers, it's the area of path. Now, we've got lots of, we've got a bit of warmth there. But we've got lots of blue, which is cold. So we need to warm something up. The tree trunks will be warm, so that will give a good contrast. Remember, cool, you know, lights and darks, uh, and warm and cool colors, you know, intermix with those. If you get them right, you're halfway there with a good painting, a good looking painting. Now, I'm still gonna use the large brush. Now. I'm going to use the cobalt blue again, or the blue you've used for the bluebells, but I'm going to put a little bit of a little bit of light red to start with. If you've got a light red, that's like a it's more or less a terracotta red. No, it's not a brilliant red. Um, you could use all alizarin, but that's a little brilliant to start. But if you've got some form of red that's not you know, really, really brilliant, then that would be fine. But you use very little red, mainly cobalt blue. So I'm starting off very light. Now let's use a light color for this area. Cobalt blue with a little of the light red in there. And that gives you a gray to start. Don't want too much red in there. It's a blue gray. Because I want a blue-grey to match the blue colour that we've got in the depth of the wood. So there, can leave a bead of white as you paint across. There you go. That's the sort of blue-grey I'm looking for initially. Then I'm going to add into the mix just a touch more of the red and introduce that. And notice how I'm pulling across, trying to leave little patches of white on the surface of the paper uh, where, where you're just missing the, um, the, um, the actual uh, uh, depth of the paper. It's catching the top. 
See the way I'm sweeping very lightly across now. I've added even more red into that foreground area. And then finally, you will need a bit of alizarin. Now, this is fun. I'm going to sweep a little bit of alizarin in. Look at that. See how that warms that up? Not everywhere. There we go. And that creates a feeling of depth. So it's cobalt blue, or the blue used with the uh, bluebells. A little light red or a dull red if you've got that. Could even be burnt sienna. That's an orangey sort of reddy brown. Then, as you come right into the foreground, a little bit of that alizarin crimson. And that, gives, that will give you that real warmth to that track. Try, notice my tone values are all light at this stage. So, you know, if you've been a bit heavy handed with the colour on the bluebells, still keep it light on the track because that will enhance the finished um, painting. Good, now that needs to be left to completely dry. Right, now it's the middle distance trees that I'm looking at now using that slightly smaller mop brush, wetting it thoroughly to start with. Now the green I'm wanting is not dissimilar to the greens that I've got there, only just a tone darker, a little bit stronger. So I'm going to use the raw sienna again, and this time not quite as much water with cobalt blue, okay. And you've got to remember springtime, the greens are nice and fresh, you know. Uh, you get some lovely fresh greens in the spring. Um, so I'm putting a little cadmium yellow with that too. So really, it's cobalt blue, cadmium yellow, and a little raw sienna, just to take away that, um, that, um, that real punch that you would get with your greens if you had just cadmium yellow in there. A little bit of raw sienna will just help to knock it back. Okay, now what we need is, this needs to be not too dark. There you go. And I'm just using the side of the brush to give an impression of overhanging leafing. And these leaves are you can build them onto any of the leafing that you've already got on there if you wish. So if you, if you can sort of swathe like that, just extend that and all of a sudden you've got the overhanging branches attached to those first washes. See that where I've put the, an overhanging branch attached to that first wash? And I'm actually going to come down a bit with that just to vary that. And I'm not going to go too far behind the large trees. Just a little bit there. There we are. See the way I'm just, just pulling across just to give that impression of something in the background. And a little bit there. A little bit in the distance there. But that's where I'd like some as well. Just to give something going on in front of that blue area. There we are. See the way that gives a slight impression now of trees that are coming that sort of more in, in front of that blurred area. Just a little bit of swathes of colour. Just more or less in that central area would be sufficient. No need to go to the outside edges because we're going to put some really dark stuff in. And remember branches, if you notice the way I'm painting them in, they, they hang. They've got a little bit of weight to them now. Now they've got leaves on, <coughs> unlike the, the, the winter. So we've got a little bit of overhanging um, feel where they're just overhanging and looking towards the light really. <coughs> They're heading towards the light, that's probably the key to it.
There you go. Right. Now, the next thing, the next thing is the branches that is associated with the more foreground trees. Well, this one is a large trunk, so we're not going to set a great deal of branches to that. But this, we've got branches um, swathing across in front and behind, right? And that is the key. We're not going to have all our, bra all our greenery behind the trunks, and then we paint the trunk over it. We're going to put all the greenery in, then we will paint the trunks, leaving gaps where there's a branch in front of the trunk. Then you leave a gap, and then you paint a bit more in, right? Now, because you've, you've gone quite dark, just need to be darker. If you can get a nice, strong, dark colour, you're, you're getting there, I can assure you, if you use a, dark, a nice, strong, dark colour, and you will, definitely, because I'm going to use Prussian blue, Windsor blue, Fuelo blue, any of those real powerful blues. So, I'm going to start off with Cadmium yellow, and Windsor blue, Prussian blue, um, that's the sort of blue we're looking for, and a dark mix. And I'm going to put in, with that, a little of the raw sienna because that will give it just that little bit more sort of punch to that green. Okay. Perfect. Look at that. Now, how, how we, where are we going to paint that? Well, this is the darker greens that are more nearer to us. Now, if I was you, I would start on the outer edge, right? Because that will give you a good idea as to whether you've got the colour right and the brush loaded correctly. If you have, you can then see the way the hairs of that brush are opening. I'm rubbing at the paper a bit more now. So which brush are you using now? This is still the, that... Um, Number six. Yeah, that, that um, pointed mop, not the large pointed mop. A um, bit more yellow going in there, just to make it a little bit fresher. Can you repeat your colours again? Yes, it's Windsor Prussian Blue, use Prussian if you wish, and Cadmium Yellow with a touch of um, raw sienna in there as well just to take off you know not too much raw sienna and just some little <coughs> swathes this is the way i paint all of my woodland scenes well vast majority a lot depending i suppose on the type of woodland scene i'm painting but there we go and that is the greenery that's overhanging the front of those branches so it's winter blue, cadmium yellow, and using a lot more yellow than you are the blue. Yes, blue. So you you need to. You really about. need to start with the yellows first, yeah. and then gently put that Prussian blue with it, yeah. because if not, you'll need half a tube of cadmium yellow to get it back to anywhere near green. Okay. There we go, and I'm going to put a couple of areas this side too. Just a little over that branch there. A little bit up there. Oh, and a branch coming in out of picture. There we go. Quite often you see that. You will see branches coming in out of picture. Behind that. Could be in front of it, but in this case I'm making it behind. So there you go. Look at that. Always a good thing to do to start in that way. There we are. And that is the overhanging branches to the trunk work that you're going to paint on later. And while I have this colour, and I want to make it a little more earthy, so I'm adding a little 
burnt sienna with it. Now it won't turn muddy because you're using Prussian blue. So it's Prussian blue, it's cadmium yellow, burnt sienna and Prussian blue this time. Um, just purely to give you a slightly different sort of muddy, uh, sort of, well, not muddy, but a little darker sort of, uh, of green because I'm going to paint in some little touches of, if I have too much on the brush, of where these greens are, you'll have dark and light areas. And that is the key to getting the lovely feeling of greenery in amongst that, um, those blue bells. There we go, look at that. Swathes of blue, swathes of a green with a touch of light colour on the top. Of course, that big tree will have shadow, so we can go a little darker there with that. A little bit of swathe of colour there. Not too much, but just a little. A little bit there. As the brush runs out of paint, don't reload it, just scratch that across the paper. And that will give you all sorts of textured looks that just, just right for um, the greenery that's standing up in amongst the bluebells. There we go. And notice how I've painted that running down into the track too, to give a feeling that the track is lower than them clumps of greens and, um, and blues there. Are you going to do 2D and 3D? Yes, I suppose you could say that. Okay, well that is the first half. The second half, you can come up obviously during uh, the break time, you can have a good look, and in the second half, we'll be dealing with the trees, plus branches, plus the little details that will be to the bluebells in the foreground. Okay, let's have a short break. This is where I'm spending my break. Um, very close to the chocolate biscuits. Well, of course, we're coming too. I'll let my meal too. So, what kind of thing Well, that's the first half. Um, we're now having a break for tea and uh, um, just really viewing the first half of everybody's work. And um, they were looking very good. The second stage of the painting and demonstration will be on my YouTube channel this coming Friday at 6pm UK time.